With 2020 finally coming to an end after insert thoughts here on obvious horrible thing we've all endured, it's time to take stock of what went right. Now I'm not going to waste any time here because 2020's selection of games has been outstanding and there's a ton of titles to break down. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are the 20 best video games of 2020. And yes, it's that time of the year, which means I have a Christmas cold, explaining my bunged up to hell voice. Anyway, number 20, Resident Evil 3. A title that feels as though it could have been double or even triple in length for the price, Resident Evil 3's remake is still an awesomely meaty action survival horror. With Nicole Tompkins playing Jill Valentine as being more than sick of Nemesis never leaving her alone, there's a real Halloween-style chemistry to their antagonistic relationship, only making those formerly titular boss fights even more memorable. Number 19, Immortals Phoenix Rising. Where Assassin's Creed Valhalla is another 100 hour extravaganza of enjoyable enough elements you've already done a thousand times before, Immortals Phoenix Rising finally feels like Ubisoft enjoying a breath of fresh wild. Power ups and new mechanics come thick and fast. A smaller map means you're always stumbling onto a puzzle, dungeon, or unlockable, and a bouncy, over animated art style keeps the energy flowing throughout. It's still that same Ubisoft formula we've seen so many times at the core, but thankfully, this game finally has heart. Number 18, Gears Tactics. I don't know what it is with Xbox properties exploring top-down strategy versions of their iconic titles, but it worked a treat for Halo, and now Gears has fleshed itself out into a satisfying turn-based title too. Upping the pace of the genre by letting you combine more actions before giving up your turn, alongside coordinating some satisfying as hell Overwatch combos, Gears Tactics was a sleeper hit over on PC, and is thankfully finally on Game Pass. Number 17, Watch Dogs Legion. Ubisoft's latest Watch Dogs title is a throwback to the old school days of Rockstar. The days when completing a mission objective didn't mean standing in a specific circle or riding around for 20 minutes while a side character tells you their life story. Here, let's say a car needs destroying. You're free to fly in on a giant drone and shoot it from above. Or you could cloak yourself and sneak around. Maybe go hog wild as a special agent with crushing takedowns, or just hack said vehicle directly and drive it out yourself. The possibilities feel expansive and unknown thanks to the whole play as anyone mechanic, which is something we've been waiting to feel when it comes to Ubisoft's titles for literally years. Number 16, The Pathless. A gorgeous open world puzzle game with the occasional boss battle thrown in, Giant Squid's follow up to Abzu brings in a fresh traversal mechanic which sees you rhythmically chain bow and arrow shots together to boost faster and faster. It's through Austin Wintry's soaring score and some eye meltingly intense boss fights though, where the whole experience is elevated tenfold. Number 15. Yakuza Like a Dragon. Taking a huge risk by swapping Yakuza's genre from melee brawler to turn-based RPG, this seventh main installment's shining beacon of brilliance comes in new character Ichiban Kazuga, a nerd at heart who literally views the world like one giant Dragon Quest campaign, hence the turn-based combat. Like a Dragon is more of a rags-to-riches tale than anything Kazuma Kiryu has been through, combined with the balmiest and most satisfying minigames the series has seen yet. Number 14, Astro's Playroom. The game living inside every PS5, Astro's Playroom is the best 3D platformer since Mario Odyssey. Not only is it an expert showcase of what the DualSense controller can do, but each of its levels are themed around PlayStation history. You'll be collecting everything from an eye toy to the PS1 multi-tap, discovering the original T-Rex polygonal demo to climbing up a PS2 just to spin that symbol on its disc tray. Nostalgia aside, this is still an immaculate game, polished to a mirror sheen with a killer time trial side mode still being furiously contested around the world. Number 13, Spiritfarer. A beautiful, heart-wrenching game about making sure all your loved ones and family members' final wishes are fulfilled before you see them off to the great beyond. Spiritfarer will play your heartstrings like nothing else. The presentation is charming, music sumptuous, and gameplay revolves around managing resources to feed everyone, prepare upgrades for your ship, give various gifts, and more. Interspersed with light platforming, when all's said and done, Spiritfarer is a shining example of the genuine human warmth we can all feel when caring for someone else. Number 12, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Yes, it's easy money for Activision to keep trotting out remakes of old classics, but when they let developers take their time and cross-blend all the best mechanics from a given series into that re-release, it makes classics like Tony Hawk's better than ever. 
adding online competitions, reverts and manuals into titles that never had them, all while retaining that soundtrack and giving everything a slick makeover. This collection may be over in a weekend if your muscle memory returns as was, but it's some of the best time you can spend with an arcadey video game, period. Number 11, Animal Crossing New Horizons. The tranquil, go-your-own-pace serenity of Animal Crossing was something we all kinda needed across 2020. But thankfully, Nintendo also expanded the addictive gameplay loops of the series by adding a ton of simplistic goals and unlocks along the way. You can totally still play Animal Crossing one fence post or planted flower at a time, or you could expand your island into a waterfall-filled paradise, ready to invite the whole world along for a visit, or to help you catch more rare fish for the museum. Animal Crossing's appeal lies in gamifying a nice big exhale. Any sense of blasting through mission lists or hurrying along to play something else goes out the window. It's nothing less than the casualest of casual titles, a home away from home you can visit whenever you need a breather. Number 10, Spider-Man Miles Morales. An eye-popping release that shows what the PS5 can do every time a sunset shows up or the entire city loads in under 5 seconds, Miles Morales also streamlines everything about that 2018 release to make for an altogether more powerful package. Electrically charged combat modifiers fuel a great campaign, and a series of simplistic collectibles enhance a brilliant cast of characters. All round, Spider-Man's quasi-sequel is that rare type of open-world game where everything feels essential, taking just the right amount of time to see it all. Number 9, Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time. Even the most hopeful of Crash fans surely didn't believe Toys for Bob could make something that would hold up next to Naughty Dog's legendary work on the original trilogy. Thankfully though, Crash 4 is every lesson they learned with the Insane Collection, and then some. Skewing for a level of difficulty and pure platforming that lines up with those first two Crash titles rather than the minigame crowd pleaser that is Crash 3, this fourth numbered installment's satisfyingly methodical feel also comes with the best cutscenes, voice acting, and character portrayals in the entire franchise. Number 8, Cyberpunk 2077. Cyberpunk 2077 feels every bit like a game hundreds of people poured themselves into for 8 solid years, with the result, at least in 2020, being a mixed bag of wildly opposing sides. Sticking to what works and ignoring the hopefully patched out ASAP crashes, bugs, and performance issues, CDPR's follow-up to The Witcher 3 is a disturbing but gorgeously realized vision of maximalist capitalistic society. Night City itself is the real showstopper. Easily the most detailed and immersive environment in gaming history, around every corner is something to see or do. Side missions, rarer gear, ripper docks to upgrade your cyberware, or maybe a super fancy vehicle to buy and call your own. Mix all of that with an overwhelmingly complex character builder, and you have an RPG with depth for the long term. Letting you explore three main character paths that eventually intersect, Cyberpunk's main campaign is a thunderous ride through various city districts, seeing you spec in whichever direction you like. Splintering various missions in a ton of different ways you'll only realize after you talk to other players, all while hanging with rockstar turned terrorist Johnny Silverhand, played brilliantly by Keanu Reeves. Such an onslaught of customization, narrative, and pacing could have been handled better, but Cyberpunk 2077 is every bit as eye-widening as we hoped when it isn't falling apart at the seams. Number 7, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Knowing they couldn't get a hair wrong with such an important release, Final Fantasy VII Remake's production value is immaculate. Incredible character models and animations, re-recruiting legendary composer Nobu Yamatsu to rescore his initial work from 1997, this is straight up video game royalty being re-approached. The result, a love letter to that original title, alongside the wider Final Fantasy VII fandom in every respect. The new plot twists and future teasers are absolutely bonkers, but this remake does succeed in unifying new players and veterans alike. Because whilst none of us really know what the future holds, at least for now, we all had one hell of a time. Number 6, Half-Life Alex. Raising the bar for interactive game spaces in virtual reality, Valve certainly took their time returning to the Half-Life IP, but playing Alex, you can see why. It's simply nothing less than true virtual reality, to the point where the ultra-realistic physics, graphics, and interactive mechanics often kinda trick your brain into thinking the way you would in the world itself. That means grabbing a car door to form a makeshift piece of cover, or just throwing whatever you can get your hands on straight at a head crab sprinting for your face. The level of immersion on display here feels like magic when you take the Vive helmet off, and Valve even do one better by closing out the story with a direct segue into Half-Life 3. Yes, really. Number 5, Doom Eternal. 
A shooter with equal brains and brawn, Doom Eternal saw its software crank up the combat chess feel of 2016's reboot to the point where playing this puts you in the most intense headspace ever. Every single calculation matters. Every deployment of an armor boost, enemy fatality to reclaim health, or a chainsaw kill to grab more ammo. Doom Eternal is nothing less than a tornado of blood, carnage, and explosions that responds to and pleasures your brain's synaptic responses as fast as you can process information. Number 4. Hades Few games are as meticulously designed and expertly crafted as Supergiant's Hades. A clockwork mechanism of unlocks, character builds, and enemy weaknesses, the secret source is how this roguelike structure is mapped for the first time in gaming to a powerful, nuanced story of character Zagreus discovering just what happened to his own mother. With weapon upgrades opening up character relationships, story beats triggering after so many runs, and the overall picture of what Supergiant have created not unfurling until after you've banked over 40 hours of gameplay, Hades is a a straight up masterwork that everybody should check out. Number 3. Ori and the Will of the Wisps Simply one of the finest sequels, platformers, Xbox exclusives, and video games ever made, Ori and the Will of the Wisps sees its initial Metroidvania stylings and fleshes them out tenfold. Combat is far meatier and melee focused. Movement is liquid butter, rolling together triple jumps, flips, evades, boost jumps, and glides. Thematically, the idea of saving every last creature in a forest overtaken by pure evil only powers you to understand this mystical world that Moon Studios have built. The score is phenomenal, and presentation across the board is genuinely unmatched. Please, oh please, go play the Ori games if you haven't already. Number 2. The Last of Us Part 2 a risky, powerful extrapolation on the need for revenge, and the exploration of why we give in to hateful mentalities so easily. The Last of Us 2 shows a sickening rivalry between Ellie and newcomer Abby, but it's also a masterpiece of narrative and game design as one. Themes of hatred manifest through personal vengeance, but also through portrayals of post-apocalyptic military factions and religious doctrines. It allows Naughty Dog to explore the very idea of human conflict on the micro and macro scale simultaneously, building to a final fight that's genuinely sickening and confrontational in the most memorable way. The Last of Us 2's subject matter and plot decisions are divisive for a reason. Naughty Dog really don't care about making sure you're comfortable with what's unfolding on screen, and it makes them an essential creative force in gaming overall. And number 1. Ghost of Tsushima where The Last of Us 2, if we're really splitting hairs, does overstay its welcome just a smidge when all's said and done, Sucker Punch's long-awaited new IP is an absolute knockout. From awesome stance-switching combat to experimental gadget-based stealth and a powerful, memorable story that arguably lands with some of the same weight as The Last of Us 2, the game's overall structure is what really makes you want to champion everything because Sucker Punch have thought of everything when it comes to making the best open world game possible. Main missions and side missions can be tackled in any order, with dialogue reflecting what you chose to do and who to do it with. This frees up the restraints of having to thunder through the main campaign and reinforces the story of one person doing as much as they can to save their homeland. Writing haikus, playing the flute, learning to fight, dyeing your armor, or just petting some foxes, it really does feel like you want to protect this land from those who seek to destroy both it and its people. The exploration of how much Jin Sakai has to become the titular Ghost of Tsushima for the sake of the greater good is one of the finest stories to come out of the 8th generation. At every level, Sucker Punch have crafted an immaculate, stunning, and thoroughly recommendable gaming experience. And those are my picks for the 20 best video games of 2020. Let me know your own picks down in the comments below. No doubt you disagree with one or two of them. And please also check out the What Culture Gaming podcast if you have the time. For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com and I'll catch you soon.